is mostly a 25 hour race. Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for tuning in. Joining me is Rob McCammon, Director of Product Management for CleverSafe. Rob, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome, George. It's good to be here. Hey, you know, we get a lot about Hadoop lately. Uh, what is it? Uh, what do I use it for? Who's using it? Uh, what does it do to my storage course? So it's a big thing on our site. So let's start at kind of a basic level, getting everybody on the same page. What is Hadoop? Hadoop is really a software system that was developed to address the challenges associated with doing very large compute tasks on very large data sets. So companies like Yahoo, Google, Facebook want to do analysis and draw conclusions from the large volume of data that the use of their systems and services create every day. And in order to be able to get through that kind of computation in a reasonable amount of time, you really want to be able to spread it out on a large number of different servers so that you can break the tasks up and throw a hundred servers or a thousand servers at that compute task. So Hadoop was created as an open source software solution to enable you to do that kind of computation at that scale. Okay, and so and, and, and good example use cases are the, the big guys like Google and, and those kind of guys. Yeah, they have been drivers of this technology. It's also widely used um, in the federal government, again, where they have a lot of data that they need to process to draw conclusions regarding, and uh, really across almost all vertical industries today, Hadoop is finding a role in the analytics practices of those companies. So even seeping its way into the commercial enterprise market? Absolutely. Like, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then, and that's where we're starting to see it show up, I think, is, is in that area. Where, uh, what's the impact on the storage infrastructure in, in that kind of environment? It sounds kind of tedious to me. Yeah, so a good place to start is How's the standard Hadoop architecture operate? So you can really describe it in four components. Okay. All right. From a functional point of view, there's a compute component and there's a storage component. The compute piece of Hadoop is called MapReduce, and that's basically an algorithmic approach to processing data okay. and reducing it to some sort of a result that you can then draw conclusions from, okay. that you can apply on different data sets on each of these storage nodes. So if you have 100 storage nodes in your Hadoop cluster, you've got MapReduce jobs running on different data on each of those 100 nodes. Okay. One of the key design objectives of the Hadoop architecture is to take the compute to where the data is. There's so much data involved right. that it would be inefficient to move it around. So instead of copying it across the network or something like that. Exactly. So okay. the storage component of Hadoop, which is called the Hadoop Distributed File System, or HDFS, mm -hmm. uh, enables you to partition the data out across all your storage nodes, and then the computation portion of Hadoop, which runs on a master node mm -hmm. um, in the form of the job tracker, is able to parse out the computing tasks to all those cluster nodes so that each piece of the overall big workload can take place on data that's stored locally on that node. So HDFS is essentially a clustered file system? It's a distributed file system okay. for a cluster of storage nodes or servers. Okay, yeah, okay. Absolutely. And so from the architectural point of view in a Hadoop cluster, you have a master node and you have a large number of slave nodes. So the master node, as I already described, disperses the workload across the cluster. Okay. It also maintains what's called the name node, which is all the metadata for the data that's stored in the Hadoop distributed file system. Okay. And then each slave is kind of a separate independent part of the big puzzle that runs MapReduce on locally stored data, and then the results get funneled together, channeled back up to the master, and that's how you get to the answer to your big uh, compute problem. Okay. And then, so th that gives us, I guess, really the architecture of, of how it lays out from a storage perspective. Correct. What are some of the common challenges that you see in, in storage environments if, if they're just using, say, traditional storage to try to deliver this sort of a product? So there are really two um, primary challenges associated with the standard Hadoop implementation. One is the cost and scalability of storage. The Hadoop distributed file system, in order to provide reliable storage, makes three copies. Okay. of everything that you're going to store in the cluster. So if you're working with five petabytes of data, you're going to have to store 15 petabytes yeah. of data in your HDFS file system, which okay. is very expensive. Well, and, and clearly those sizes, that we're not making those, just so everybody knows, we're not making those numbers up just to impress people. That's a typical uh, Hadoop uh, size, right? Yeah, there are absolutely people running Hadoop on five petabyte workloads. Right. There are smaller ones and there are larger ones. There's a very big dynamic range, but that is not unusual for the types of uh, customers that are using 
Hadoop in their okay. environment. So cost of storage is a big one. Yep. And okay. the second one is this name node. So having all the metadata uh, associated with all that stored data uh, stored in one master, which is really a single point of failure, is a challenge from a reliability point of view. If you lose your master node, you essentially have lost all the data in your Hadoop cluster. So of course, people apply traditional high availability techniques to the master node. They create a cluster of servers and so forth. But still, there's a limit to how reliable you can you can make that system. Is there also an I.O. contention uh, here too because all the metadata is stored on one node? Does it get bottlenecked there or is that not an issue? Uh, I think it's a secondary issue. Okay. Yeah, not one of the primary challenges okay. of Hadoop. Okay, great. So then, uh, so those are the, the key challenges. H how does uh, CleverSafe really address these issues? So first, instead of making three copies of the data so that it's stored reliably, we use our dispersed storage network technology to take a single copy of the data and store it across the cluster in a way that's even more reliable mm -hmm. than three copies of data stored in HDFS. Okay. So you get more reliable storage at a fraction of the storage cost okay. than with the generic or vanilla Hadoop implementation. The second thing we do is instead of storing the metadata on a master node, we disperse the metadata and store all the metadata in our storage network, giving the metadata the same high level of reliability and availability as all the other data which stored in HDFS. So you don't have to invest as much in the single point of failure type of stuff that we were talking about over here? Correct. Okay. We're going to make the metadata more reliable by dispersing it. We're going to make the data storage more reliable and more cost effective by using information dispersal instead of replication. The compute components of Hadoop are unchanged and unimpacted and unaware of the fact that we've made these improvements in the storage layer because they all rely on a well-defined interface, which is the HDFS API, as the means of communication between compute components and storage components. And because we're providing an HDFS API on top of our dispersed storage, all these things work exactly as so they, they would So they just think they're other. talking to a regular HDFS. Exactly. They're unaware that anything has been improved by the introduction of our dispersed storage technology. Okay. So summarize for me then the, the key benefits here. Obviously, I'm seeing reduced cost. Uh, it sounds like increased reliability and uh, maybe potentially better performance. Is that right? Yep. All those things are absolutely true, but it's good to think one step further. How does that benefit someone from a business point of view? So for example, today, it's not uncommon for people to make tough choices uh, in choosing a subset of all the data they have to put in their Hadoop cluster because mm -hmm. they can't afford a Hadoop uh, cluster right. large enough to store all the data they'd like to process this way. So by making the storage so much more cost effective, we allow them to do analytics on much larger data sets and derive additional business value from their use of Hadoop and from their use of storage. Well, a lot of times in that case, the, the, the bigger the pool of the data you can analyze, the more accurate, the potentially accurate your results would be, right? Exactly. If you can look at a week's worth of data, it's better than looking at 24 hours of data. If you can look at a month's worth of data, it's better yeah. than looking at a week's worth of data. And I would say the second really interesting application here is people that have built large storage infrastructures mm -hmm. for other purposes, like archiving large amounts of data, mm -hmm. now actually have a way to derive value from that data. It's not just an insurance policy that they've you know, protected in case something goes wrong in their primary storage, but they can now use Hadoop analytics on that data sitting in the storage system they already have for archive purposes and get additional business value from that investment. Okay, great. Well, thanks for coming in and clearing that up for us. So I think that was very valuable. Thanks very much. Thank you. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for tuning in.